Today, the second coronavirus vaccine could get its emergency approval. In the metro, some hospitals are standing by to receive it. ABC's Andrew Dimbert has the very latest from Washington. Amid the rising number of COVID cases, an FDA advisory panel approves a second vaccine made by Moderna. Looks like we have a favorable vote. Unlike Pfizer's vaccine, Moderna's can be stored in regular freezers, making it easier to distribute to more remote parts of the country. Studies show the Moderna vaccine is 94% effective in preventing symptomatic cases of COVID-19, similar to the Pfizer vaccine already being used nationwide. Federal officials insist that between Pfizer and Moderna's vaccinations, they'll meet their goal of delivering 20 million doses by year's end. And this morning, Vice President Mike Pence rolling up his sleeve and getting the shot to instill confidence in the American public that the vaccines are safe. Health officials hope the two vaccines take the wind out of the surging number of cases, but the COVID tracking project is reporting a record high number of deaths from the virus in the U.S. for the second week in a row. Intensive care units across Southern California now at full capacity. You have to pick which one of your patients has the best chances of making it, and that's one you're going to have to give most of your care to. California is not alone. A new forecast shows the southeast faces an especially high risk for a surge in cases, including Atlanta, the Carolinas, and Tennessee. Experts are urging governors to take a stand against holiday events because they say this ongoing surge is the worst yet. Dr. Anthony Fauci telling Fox News. You don't have to cancel things. You can still spend time with your family. I'm just asking people to be careful. Well, meanwhile, Wyandotte County is going to, uh, they're going to be one of the first locations to get the Moderna vaccine next week. KMC 9's Martin Augustine is live in Kansas City, Kansas with a plan to distribute it there. Hey, Martin, good morning. Good morning, Rob. This old Kmart at 78th and State Avenue has been a COVID-19 testing location for Wyandotte County. But once that vaccine arrives, this will also be where you get your COVID-19 vaccinations. Here's the order in which those vaccinations are going to go out. They're first going to go to uh, health department workers here in Wyandotte County and EMS personnel. That would be your paramedics out there on the front line. After that, it'll be healthcare associated workers receiving the vaccine. Now, the unified government likes this location because it's centrally located in Wyandotte County. And even after the vaccine begins to uh, be distributed here, it will remain a COVID-19 testing station. Reporting live in KCK, Martin Augustine, KBC9 News. All right, Martin, thank you so much. So both Kansas and Missouri say their second shipment to the Pfizer vaccine will be going to be smaller than the first. Pfizer says there's been no reduction on its part, and the Department of Health and Human Services says reports of reductions are not correct. However, the number of vaccines getting to Kansas City hospitals isn't even. Well, both the Children's Mercy Health System as well as the HE Health Midwest say that their hospitals in Kansas have vaccines, but their Missouri facilities don't. Missouri Governor Mike Parsons says things change every day. We're prepared uh, if the vaccine doesn't come in quantities or if it comes in more. We're prepared for that. The second Pfizer shipment for Missouri was supposed to hold another 51,000 doses. Kansas expected another 24,000. And frontline workers in St. Luke's health system got their first doses of the Pfizer vaccine Thursday. One of the first nurses to get the shot uh, to get her first shot says that nothing in her 22 year career prepared her for what she's seen patients go through. She's relieved the vaccine is finally here. I think we'll never be the same. Um, but some of that will be in a good way. I mean, I think we'll be more mindful of that this can happen and more prepared. And I think we'll come out of this stronger. Well, St. Luke's expects to have given the first round of the vaccine to 1,000 people by the end of the day. And meanwhile, the case numbers are rising. On Thursday, Missouri reported more than 3,500 new cases. We'll get another update from Kansas later today. In Kansas, the positivity rate is at 14.9% right now. In Missouri, it's still holding steady. On average, 17.8% of tests are coming back positive. A local first responder is begging everyone to take the virus seriously after she tested positive twice. Carrie Christian was a healthy firefighter and paramedic. Well, she first tested positive for the virus in May and then again when her son got it last month. Carrie still deals with some lingering symptoms like migraines, brain fog, and even occasional numbness in her legs. She hopes her story encourages everyone to follow health and safety guidelines. I would feel horrible giving it to somebody. So just thought thinking of, you know, what happens if I was the one who gave it to a loved one who passed away from it. I don't think any normal human being could stand with that guilt. Carrie says she has joined an online support group to help with her mental health in the pandemic. 
And by the way, not following coronavirus restrictions in Johnson County could now land you in legal trouble. 11 cities in Johnson County are now allowing enforcement of the public health order that restricts large gatherings and operating hours for certain businesses. County staffers say education is the priority of codes enforcement, but people who do not address violations could face fines. Chinese City Council voted not to enter into an enforcement agreement in a split vote. Olathe City Council hasn't taken up the issue. DeSoto City Council is expected to vote on the issue January 7th. During Thursday's County Board of Commissioners meeting, Johnson County's Director of Epidemiology urged action to prevent further spread of COVID-19. If our growth continues in the way that it had been leading into Thanksgiving weekend, um, we're going to be in a lot of trouble. There's a proportion of all individuals who become infected with COVID-19 will end up in the hospital and a proportion of those individuals will die. And that is just a statistical fact. And so we as a community have got to really come together. So far, the county has received 14 business complaints related to the public health order. Spokesperson says most of them are about masks. Those complaints are then referred to the district attorney's office. Meanwhile, Kansas City, Missouri's top health official says the city's mask mandate could last until mid to late summer. Health director Dr. Rex Archer told city council that the new coronavirus vaccines are bringing hope for the future, but everyone still needs to continue taking precautions. As of now, the city's mask orders in effect until January 16th. No decision has been made on extending it. For the latest developments on coronavirus cases as well as the vaccine, visit KMBC.com. You can also find the information by downloading our free KMBC 9 News app. All right, 840, let's check in with Katie Furlick at a Friday weather. Hey, Katie, how are you looking It is Friday. Today? You know, yeah. it just it occurred to me. I think it is so. Let me do Okay, sometimes I get the days <laughs> wrong. It is. I know, like we're all run okay. together this year. <laughs> we have got an overcast sky. I won't stay on this very long because the camera is starting to shake a bit. As predicted, the winds are accelerating. Right now, they're sustained around 10 to 15 miles an hour, gusting around. 20 25 miles an hour, but that's just the beginning. They're going to start gusting up to 40, maybe even as high as 45 miles an hour late this morning, early this afternoon. Specifically, between 10 and 2 is when we anticipate the strongest winds. And the counties that may get the strongest wind are highlighted here, and that's pretty much the metro. And then our counties down in Kansas, especially along the turnpike, keep in mind high profile vehicles along east to west highways could get blown around quite a bit with this strong crosswind. A north wind comes in tonight with the passage of a cold front, so the weekend won't be quite as warm, only in the 40s and really cold Christmas morning. Sounds good, Katie. Thanks so much. It's 841 now and we had new details stemming from a serious wreck involving two pedestrians last week. We've learned one of them, a 65 year old man has died. Well, police say that he and another man were um, they were hit when two vehicles lost control near East 107th and Blue Ridge Boulevard. Well, police are investigating to see if one of those drivers was impaired. And Kansas City, Missouri police have identified a man and a woman killed Wednesday in a double homicide. Investigators say Roy Bosby and Gabriel Freeman died in the shooting at the Canyon Creek Apartments near 93rd and Bales. Witnesses reported hearing between 15 and 20 gunshots. So far, there have been no arrests. If you have any information that can help police, call Crime Stoppers. The number is 816-474-TIPS. Meanwhile, Truman Medical Center is raising its minimum wage to $15 an hour. Like most businesses, hospitals have taken a huge financial hit in the pandemic. The group's president and CEO says boosting wages is the right thing to do. We thought, given everything that uh, folks are going through right now, in particular our staff that have been working so hard through this pandemic, um, that now is not the time to wait. We need to do this now. The Truman employs about 4,500 people. The pay bump will affect about 500 of them. And the North Kansas City School District wants to honor a KCFD firefighter who died from COVID complications. Students have been working on thank you cards and kindness rocks for firefighters. On Monday, they'll deliver the gifts to two different fire stations, the one where Captain Bobby Rocha worked and the one where his son works. Well, the school district says firefighters are brave and selfless heroes. Of course they are, and Rocha had been with the department for 29 years. And this morning, a woman mistakenly arrested in a botched police raid shares her terrifying story. Here, what she says happened after police broke down her door and left her naked in handcuffs. And the Chiefs get some help keeping the only team to beat them out of the playoffs. We're going to show you the play that nearly derailed the Raiders' playoff chances. Today, we are pocketed in the warm sector of this storm system that's approaching. It is going to swing a cold front through, but should you expect precipitation? We'll look at that coming up next. The latest facts, important updates, and what to expect. KNBC 9 First News, leading the way.
It is now 846. The primary weather feature today will be the wind and we have a wind advisory from 10 until 2. The strongest wind gusts could go up as high as 45 miles an hour, which could cause unsecured items to go blowing around. It could cause some tree limbs to break and if they happen to hit a power line, we could be dealing with some uh, few and far between power outages, but just something that is possible today. In addition to the strong crosswind on east to west highways like I 70 colder over the weekend though. Well, season temperatures back into the 40s. Johnny Rollins keeping an eye on our morning commute. Thank you, Katie. As we take a look at your drive in this morning, not bad at all. Really, the rush hour has been over for a little while here, as has uh, that been the routine here for the last, uh, well, long time. We'll take a look at K10, the inbound here past Woodland. Traffic going away from us. The eastbound run headed on over to I-35 and 435. Very light through here, not seeing any kind of a slowdown at all. And really, we don't have any traffic problems left over from the rush hour this morning at all. Johnny Rollins, News Chopper 9, back to you in the studio. All right, thanks so much, Johnny. Well, meanwhile, this week, we have been watching the historic winter storm in the Northeast. Take a look at this. The snow caused the roof of the sports complex in Binghamton, New York, to collapse. Binghamton, which is up in New York's southern tier, got three and a half feet of snow in the storm. Most well, of the first responders survived a very close call in the snow and ice in Pennsylvania. Take a look. Well, they're working a crash scene when an out of control tru uh, truck you see there crashed into an emergency vehicle. Well, those two medics got out of the way just in time, thankfully. Well, newly released body cam footage shows the moment Chicago police officers went into the wrong home with a warrant arresting an innocent woman at gunpoint while she was nude. Police body camera footage shows the officers with their guns drawn inside the wrong apartment. Well, the social worker who lives there, Ann Jeanette Young, was changing after coming home from work. Police handcuffed her as she stood there naked and humiliated. I was scared into compliance. Like, I just did what they said to me because I was afraid if I did anything or made any moves that they would shoot me. They had guns pointed at me. I feared for my life that night. Chicago's mayor also talked about the raid. She said she was appalled and is working to learn more about what led up to it. Well, mask messaging appears to be working. A new study out this morning by the Kaiser Foundation shows more Americans do not have a problem wearing a mask daily. 73% of the people questioned say they wear a mask every time they leave home. That's up 23% since May. Well, the number is still heavily divided, though, by political party. 87% of Democrats and 71% of independents wear masks every day. Only 55% of people who identify as Republicans wear one. And Republican and former New Jersey Governor Chris Christie is helping promote the masking message. I thought about how wrong I was to remove my mask at the White House. Today, I think about how wrong it is to let mask wearing divide us, especially as we now know you're twice as likely to get COVID-19 if you don't wear a mask. Because if you don't well, this is part of a new TV ad here. Christie spent a week in the hospital after coming down with the coronavirus earlier this year. In just weeks, the pandemic's about to collide with what is typically one of America's biggest events, the swearing in of a new president. Lots undecided for the inauguration on January 20th. Traditional balls and luncheons could be canceled and the swearing in ceremony could look different too. President-elect uh, Biden has uh, said, you know, we're probably not going to be able to have uh, the kind of ceremony that people are uh, used to seeing. And that should be no surprise. Joe Biden swearing in itself will not be virtual. It'll still be in front of the Capitol. The platform for VIPs can hold 1,600 people, but the inaugural committee is planning on lowering capacity because of the pandemic. Well, if you still need to ship any presents or other items ahead of Christmas, time is running out. Deadline for the cheaper ground shipping option with the U.S. Postal Service is passed. The priority mail deadline is tomorrow. And then after that, the only option is the costlier priority mail express. Well, deadlines with UPS start December 21st for three-day select shipping and air shipping. Well, police in California are looking for an unusual porch pirate. Well, they say an elderly man is stealing packages from homes. A ring doorbell camera caught him in the act. There he goes. Well, this accused thief is reminding investigators not all suspects are wrapped in the same package. Usually your average age of someone being a porch pirate is you know, in their 20s or their 30s. Crime has no age, as you can see from this case. Nope, sure doesn't. 
Well, back at home, local police are also seeing a rise in package thefts. The Lee Summit Police Department shared these tips you see here. If you're allowed to, have your packages delivered to your place of work or maybe to a family member who will be home. Some carriers like Amazon and FedEx also offer business locations that will hold your package for pickup. If there's one team the Chiefs likely do not want to face in the playoffs this year, it's the Raiders. Well, thankfully, Kansas City got some help last night, courtesy of the LA Chargers. Trailing by three in overtime, Chargers QB Justin Herbert is able to get the ball across the goal line on the third down to give LA the win. The Chargers victory drops the Raiders, the only team to beat the Chiefs, down to 7-7. Seven and seven. Meanwhile, here's a look at what uh, this does to the playoffs picture. The Chiefs are still holding on to the top spot in the AFC, and the conference is only first round by. And then the loss it, last night it puts the Raiders one and a half games out of the final available playoff spot with a couple weeks left. The st uh, statistical site 538 gives them just a 2% chance to make the playoffs now.